Welcome to Astrology Today, Sherry from the beautiful Sunshine Coast and the Quebec region, which is situated on the traditional lands of the Kohama Nation. I will be your host, Maureen Reed, and I am an astrologer. And of course, joining me as usual is astrologer Jill Kirby, who hails from Victoria. And let's see if we've got the sound right. Hello. Yay! <laughs> and I have to remember to eat the mic because otherwise I'm not all that terribly audible. Okay. And enunciate. <laughs> enunciate very clearly. I can do that. Yes, and I can. So, what are we up to today? We are up to the infamous month of August. Why is it infamous? Well, um, as Jill suggested, we should probably start with the new moon that occurred just a day ago because it shows the dynamic wonderful tension that is currently in the air so just a little aside before we get talking about this if you want to follow along with the uh, visuals uh, they're up on my website uh, www.cardinalastrology.ca Go to the podcast tab and it's episode 145. So up on the screen, we have what is called a grand cross, which means all of the fixed signs are being triggered. So that would be Scorpio, that would be Aquarius, that would be Taurus, and that would be Leo. And there is, who's not in this? Only Jupiter and Venus, the two benefits, of course, are nowhere to be seen. <laughs> That's just sad right now that the benefits can't even, you know, sort of ease the load at all. But interesting that, you know, Mars rules the sign that Jupiter is in and Jupiter is stationary. Yes, that's and, true. That's true. And, um, Venus rules Taurus. So yes. and, yeah. and Venus and Jupiter are squaring each other. So <laughs> just noticing that. Yeah, yeah. So let's think about that for two seconds. So although Mars and Uranus are about to do the dance um, to its crescendo, maybe Venus and Jupiter are helping. But how would you help Mar, the war god, meeting up with the guy in charge of chaos? Well, I think, you have, I think you have to look at the fact that the new moon is also trining Jupiter. True, true. And Jupiter is stationary. So again, it's sort of, it's um, bringing in that hot energy of Mars and <laughs> Leo. And, you know, Jupiter likes to make things more, so... <laughs> Yeah, so more, more, more chaos. Yay. Well, no. Also, you know, Jupiter likes freedoms. Leo likes fun. You know, I mean, let's have some more fun. Let's, let's enjoy summer. <laughs> yes, well, yes, exactly, exactly. And way off in the distance is someone hailing, but try to be safe. Well, I, was no, I was noticing in the news today, um, CBC was talking, uh, they had uh, a thing about um, the unusual amount of drowning deaths because um, in the last two years, people, I guess, have forgotten how to be safe in the water. Mm. Okay. That would be that little bit of Neptune who's way off there in the mutable signs. He's the only mutable, isn't he? That's yeah, okay. interesting though. Interesting though that Neptune and Pluto are their sextile each other, but they're not really involved with anybody else. No, exactly. And that, we just, that just <laughs> yeah, well, that is true. We don't really need to add more fuel to this configuration. Um, and it is to be noted that um, there is this huge group of people who have that Pluto sextile Neptune. Um, yes. Yeah, there's. But well, that is going out of phase here shortly. And yeah. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, and they, 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 a while before that ever repeats again, but both Joe and I and people born in the 50s and the 60s. Well, yeah, it was going on for a really long time because yeah, they're yeah. both so slow moving, but yeah. they went out of that for a bit, but now they're sort of back to, yeah. 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 But yeah, they're not, they're not part of this whole, the rest of oh, the, they aren't. right? Yeah. They're just sort of separate from it, which is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also, the um, the other aspect that Jupiter has is a semi square to Saturn. Mm -hmm. So and the fact that Jupiter is stationary at the time of the new moon, I think, is significant. Oh, totally. totally. As he's yeah. turning turning to go retrograde, he's going to back up to the last degree of Pisces again, and then go forward full steam into Aries. Yeah, so we do get a brief Jupiter Neptune Pisces download moment later. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what month that happened in, but uh, yeah, it's obviously not the end of October. Close. End of October? Okay, there you go. So and a little bit about a fixed cross. Um, and so one of the things we can say about fixed, any kind of cross, um, grand cross, which is four planets, obviously with oppositions and squares to each of the corners. Uh, this one does involve the uh, current uh, eclipse signature of Rahi and K2. Uh, and so obviously this is a preview of the grand finale in the fall. Um, but beginning, that, of, beginning of October. Beginning of October when the eclipse is starting. First yeah. week and a half or so of October, the, yeah. the Saturn and Uranus will both be at 18 degrees. They won't be to exact to the minute, but they will both be at 18 degrees. Yeah, right. So that, that'll be the season finale. <laughs> well, it's, and that's leading into the eclipses. So yeah, exactly. it's, yeah, this is all very, this, yeah. this is the preview. And so when you, have a, when you have a cross, um, the good thing about the cross is the fact that the challenges are out in the open. They're, um, they're not covert, they're not subversive. It's like everybody tries to go through the intersection at the same time from all four directions. And the ensuing smash up in the middle, again, is not, uh, it's not blind, it's obvious. And one of my takeaways from that when I see a person that has this type of, like, so somebody born on July the 28th, the, the, our hearts go out to them. <laughs> but, um, you know, so with, within that dynamic, the one piece that works, that makes sense to me, is to respect the differences. Um, what would you say about how to work with, and this could be in any of the, the, you know, well, and I, and I think the thing to look at with the Grand Cross is to see if there is an outlet for it. Mm -hmm. You know, and Mars is sextiling uh, Venus, mm -hmm. and um, Venus is trining the South Node. Um, mm -hmm. And then the the New Moon itself is that it's not part of the Grand Cross, but it is it is trining Jupiter. So. You know, it's yeah. there's, so there's you, when you see a, a, a fixed cross or a cardinal cross or a mutable cross, you look for an outlet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so, I think, how, do, how do you see the outlet? What what job does it perform? Well, I think it because when you have fixed cross, it's it's a closed system. Yeah, right. The energy can it's very dynamic, but. It needs an outlet because otherwise the energy is just going round and round and round, you know, opposing and, and squaring, but not so you get like finding a way off in the middle. Make it, make it, you know, something helpful. Right, right. So you get the standoff in the middle. I actually witnessed it once in downtown Toronto where all four lanes of traffic had come to a nose to nose in the middle of the intersection. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, and and it can, what do you think you're going to accomplish? So what you're saying makes total sense. There has to be something yeah. outside of that configuration. Yeah, and I think, you know, when you do have that, that stress and tension in the moment, yeah. even, even the ones that are the trines and sextiles that aren't part of that are at least giving 
a way to you know have uh, have some ease and flow that can help see things more clearly yeah, yeah. yeah. that's so my on a on a personal level um what we're coming into this first week of august then is maximum tension and uh, unfortunately, the moon, the sun, and Venus will sort of keep dragging this out for a good 10 days, um, keeping this tension, you know, the jam up in the middle of the city. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, and I think, as I was mentioning, that the thing I noticed was that in this Grand Cross, we have Mercury opposing Saturn, sort of filling yeah. in fourth leg. Yeah. The other planets are slow. I mean, the nodes aren't very fast, and even no. Mars not that fast. Mercury's fast, so but it's going to be replaced. <laughs> yes, exactly by the Sun and Venus. Yeah, by the Sun. The, the yeah. So it's it's kind of like dragging it out. Shifts, shifts right. So yeah. what's being highlighted right now is Mercury, which is information. Yeah, that's part of what's you know. Yeah. creating creating a lot of the tension yeah right you know the information we get that you know that creates a lot of tension for people because too much for one thing but yeah. also just just well in, in a in a fix what we've got is competing and again you, if you picture those cars stuck in the middle of an intersection everybody's shouting a different message you know yeah. trying to be the dominant one yeah. Well, and there's a stubbornness with fixed signs. Oh, so, with fixed signs, yeah. It's like I well, have the way the truth and the light, and you don't. Yeah. So it's it's I'm right, you're wrong, you yeah. know, and that's that's what Merc this Mercury and this fixed piece yeah. is. Yeah. It's creating more division, more yeah. fighting yeah. arguments, whatever, because yeah. of the intense energy that's yeah, that's, know, that's in the air right now. You know, so you're, either, one you're either supporting Saturn's end, you know, the status quo, what is, and all that stuff, or you're supporting the Iranian piece because that's really what this is about. Right. So yeah, that's on that's on a big scale. So on a personal scale, though, so know that if you enter into an argument, yeah, maybe just turn around and go, not today, not today. Yeah, 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 and I think that's that's where this the sun moon trying to Jupiter brings a, a bigger picture. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. Mercury, Mercury, Mercury is, can get lost in the details. It's yeah. say too much, so much information and trying to weed through it all. And but I'm right and you're wrong, whatever. But yeah. Jupiter can have the eagle's eye view. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so yeah. I think that's part of that. That's yeah. really. Yeah, that's going to help in this next week. Yeah. To, yeah, take a step back and go, you know, I need a bigger picture here. I don't need to just, yeah, get caught up in this traffic jam in the middle of the intersection. No, no. So and that's not going to accomplish anything. No, no. And, you know, like, agree to disagree. Yep. Doesn't, you know, you don't make other people wrong. Yes, exactly. Because exactly. nobody really has all the answers. Nobody no, has That's for sure. Answers, really. <laughs> <laughs> we all have opinions all and, be and beliefs, but we don't yeah. know the truth, capital T truth. No, yeah. that's for sure. Right? Yeah, that's... So it's about keeping your mind open. Yeah. Which is Jupiter, right? Yes, exactly. And, and you know, like I say, the fact that Jupiter is stationary is really kind of gives it more power in this. Yes. What is oh, already totally, totally. Which is all, what is already a very dynamic chart. And it's also ruled by that Mars. So it's like, you know, they are connected in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So literally, just to start us into the month, um, the actual conjunction between Mars and Uranus at 18 degrees with the North Node actually happens on August 1st. Um, and what's today? So is that tomorrow? Sorry? Have, is it tomorrow that is August the 1st? No, Monday. Monday. Okay. So this is part of a long weekend. Um, and so be incredibly careful of not getting caught up 
in, you know, some sort of angry, irrational, or, you know, rash action. Um, uh, so everybody, you know, count to 10 when they're on that, in that fairy lineup. Uh, yes. <laughs> what else? What else could it be? Um, well, I think the other thing to, to, to be aware of with, from our perspective on this, is that it is the North Node. Yes. Which is kind of a more, it's got a more positive take. That in modern, in modern vernacular, yeah. totally. In Hellenistic, absolutely not. Well, yeah, they, I know. That. They see the, the nodal axis as just being, yeah. um, you know, one is con constriction in terms of unexpected changes. One is expansion. So the North Node is expansion in unexpected ways. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, sort of Jupiter's similar. also about expansion. So, you know, in that sense, I think we, we tend to think in terms of expansion being somewhat more positive. And also in modern yeah. terms, the North Node is more where we're going. Yeah. And, yeah. and the South Node is letting go of what's been. So this is about what is our future. And Jupiter's very much about that as well, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think that's part of the theme of this is you know, so that's, we might see some sudden revelation that point toward a possible future. Yeah, and, and also let's not get lost in the details of this moment because there's a yeah. bigger picture. We need yeah. to focus on where we want to go. Yeah, yeah, get the ship turned in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, that's, I think, the positive takeaway from this is yeah. keep and that in the meantime mind. in the ferry lineup. Breathe. And, and you've got that sextile Mars to Venus with the new moon, at least. And so that's kind of moving into this with a, there's a little bit of grace there somehow. <laughs> or sexual tension that could create the ultimate orgy. <laughs> anyway, speaking of ultimate orgies, that would be on August the 2nd. We have Venus sextiling Uranus, obviously sextiling Mars and the North Node. Um, that could be the inception of all sorts of entertaining people coming nine months later. Well, it's also, what, I think also about family, you know? Family. Yeah. I mean, she's in, she's in cancer. She, she's in cancer. That's true. That's true. So a family I mean, gathering she, could be quite dynamic. Yeah, and she's not yeah, not nice. squaring these guys. She's sextile. No, she's sextile. Yeah. And it's it's like let's focus on the family of, of you know a bigger picture of those yeah. you know who want to come together to make things better, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Now Mercury, I'm just gobsmacked at how fast he's going. So on August third, he's already into Virgo. It's like yeah. whoa, he's just he just zipped through. Speedy Gonzalez. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is interesting at this point, because from this, you know, from August the 3rd, you know, the other, um, obviously the moon will have left, but the sun and Venus will be very shortly catching up to this grand cross. But now we have a Mercury that is at its height of occupational excellence because when Mercury is in Virgo, not only does it rule Virgo, but it's also in its exaltation in Virgo. And so all of the dot connecting can actually come together uh, for a while. Here, yeah. Until it catches up to Neptune and then it all goes to crap. Well, but it's, but it's before it goes to the aspect with Neptune, it's going to right. try, try that yep. Uranus North Node Thing again. Exactly. Exactly. So again, it's sort of yeah, kind of bringing more, more awareness and clarity. I think Uranus yeah. can bring clarity. Oh yeah, yeah yeah. yeah so. Okay, August seven, uh, Venus, who is still in Cancer, will then trine Neptune. So this is one of those sweet moments. Um, August the seventh. Do you have a calendar there? What day is that? Hmm. Do you have a calendar up by any rare chance? Do you have a calendar up? Uh, no, I don't have a calendar up. I have my ephemeris in front of me though. Okay, so what is the seventh? It's the Sunday. 
It's a Sunday. Okay, so week from tomorrow. Virtual, virtual download in the face of Mars squaring Saturn. All right, because Venus and Cancer will then be climbing Neptune. So that's really sweet. But in the backdrop is this heart moment of Mars squaring Saturn. Right. So this is putting maximum movement into a system that wants to just stay put. Yeah. Well, yeah, but but Mercury's trining Mars, is it not? Uh, not until. I don't mean exactly to the minute. I just mean. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, roughly speaking, yes, it would be. Well, I don't know. But you've got the ephemeris there. Well, yeah. So the seventh. Where, where is Mercury on the seventh? Mm, no, no, I guess not. Yeah, I didn't think so. He's fast, but he's not quite that fast. Okay. But, but it's going to do that before it. Yeah, yeah, it'll be part of the month totally. Okay, so on August eighth, uh, Venus, who is now sort of starting to pick up speed, uh, she will be opposing Pluto, um, and. You know, that's a moment where power dynamics within face-to-face uh, -face style relationships, partnerships on any kind of scale, whether that's at home, personal, on the global stage, um, there can be uh, this moment where who has the power. Yeah. 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 And she will be trying Neptune then too. Yeah, exactly. So confusing. <laughs> Um, August the 11th, um, the sun enters into this grand cross, um, and Mars at the same, same time now has moved out, but still we have Uranus and Saturn in that grand cross, and the nodal axis, and so the sun starts with a square to Uranus, and then by the 14th, so this is pulling those two days together. But the 11th is the, the full moon. Yeah. So I'll get to that. I'm just outlining the outside and then we'll pull up that chart. Yeah. Um, and so the tension that is right here at the beginning of the month gets reawakened. And like she says, this is the full moon. So let's pull it down. But the full moon itself is actually it's, out of the It's the clock. next one. You have to go to the next one. You got the oh, yeah. I got in the wrong order. I am sorry. I do. Oh, yeah. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. So here we have it. Um, it's exactly squaring the nodal axis. Uh, yeah. So it is totally part of that same tension. Um, there is, well, I don't know. Pluto is helping Mars maintain the tension, um, adding a bit of confusion to Neptune. Yeah. But well, Mars is still part of that, too. Oh, totally. totally. You know, and it's pulling Pluto into the picture, which yeah, is unfortunate. Yeah. You know, it's squaring Saturn. So you got that whole let's go and Saturn says, let's yeah. put on the brakes kind of thing. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's and again looking for the the release points here. We want right. Yeah. So, so you've, got, you've got you've got Mercury, Mercury. Your yeah. Virgo trining. Yeah, that'll help. Uh, uh, Uranus, North Jupiter, I don't know. Jupiter isn't really well. It says there's a prime between that and the Sun, but that's a that's a pretty no. That's from Chiron. That's not from Jupiter. I don't think Jupiter making anything. Nobody's low enough in Jupiter. Jupiter. Yeah, Jupiter. The only thing Jupiter's got the the um, Saturn is semi sextile, semi square. Right. Yeah, so it's not it's very not. potent. It's, but it's still part of that square dynamic, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There is a bit of outlet there. Yeah. yeah, but the trines and sextiles are what we want to look to, I think. And yeah. Mars, Mars has the sextile to Neptune, yeah. and um, yeah. And the trine to Pluto, which may not help. But what's interesting here too is there will be one definite qualitative shift, and that is Sun Moon. Um, this is could be very anxious, could be very depressed, could be yeah. Saturn Moon is not a nice combination um, to add into this uh, tension. Um, yeah, well, yeah. you know, 
the tension will have gone on for quite so because it got yeah, kicked. So yeah, it'll be starting to wear on people. So I it's I think people are just gonna feel kind of worn down by yeah, attention. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You know, because there's yeah. a it's almost like the pressure is being put on us. Yeah. In a big way. Yeah. In a big way. Yeah. And and you've got Mercury actually it looks like a sesqui quadrant, yeah. which is square and a half to Pluto there. So yeah. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> yeah, uh, so um, around the 11th, so this would be like the second week of August, finding a really quiet, well, not necessarily quiet, but you know, some way of removing yourself from the general chaos out there. Yeah. Can't be a plan, it is summer, you know, go camping. Yeah, unless it happens to be like my eldest daughter, that's your birthday. <laughs> Solar return. Oh my dear. Oh my dear. Yeah, pretty close uh, to her solar return. Yep. yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. well, our hearts go out to her. Yes. <laughs> what yes. else that has a birthday around August the 11th this week? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> we do get these from time to time. It's, it's not as bad as the one this spring where Venus was enclosed by the malefics, right? Yeah. Mars on one side, Venus in the middle, and then Saturn. Yeah, that was. For the folks that have that I've watched with that solar return dynamic, yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes you have a year that's just not pretty. Yeah. And Venus has just moved out of the trine with Neptune. I mean, it's yeah. Yeah. you could call it a trine, but yeah, she's ready to party. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay. yeah, but I think that Mercury trying to the Uranus North Node is we might get some clarity, which would be good. That would be good. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the sun pulls into an exact opposition to Saturn while Mars does its exact sign to Pluto. Uh, so this would be a releasing moment. Yeah. Uh, especially the Mars time Pluto. That that would be your releasing. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what's good. What this will be like. I think it's you're gonna have build, build, build of tension and then a little bit of release and yeah, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's uh which yeah. will, will feel stressful to some people for sure. Or like I said in my little bio for this month, um, you know, cut anybody with heavy fixed signatures in their chart, cut them some slack because they're <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she puts her hand up, so do I. <laughs> you know, we're fielding this energy directly. Um, you know, because it I guess if you had stuff at the beginning of the fixed signs or at the very end of fixed signs, you're kind of not necessarily right in the path. But if you've got stuff near the middle, yeah, yeah, like from 10 to 20, yeah, yeah you're in the thick of it. Yeah. Okay, so next one is August 16th, Mercury Prime Uranus. We could look for some exciting. Um, realistic, because Mercury is in her though, uh, revelations about some ways to move forward. Um, yeah, there could be some yeah, like, announcements think, yeah. and innovation. Yep. Could be very, yes, a little bit of excitement that is positive. <laughs> yes, yes, yay! Which would be so, nice. That would be nice. That would be totally nice. And then yeah, so we have this little sweet moment in the middle here. Um, so from the 16th through to the 18th, because on the 18th, uh, Venus, who is now in Leo, she will be finding Jupiter. So the 18th, oh, that's the day I leave to go to a wedding. Yeah, so that'll be a, there is a good day. <laughs> Yay, it's always good to have one day in the month. No, no, I'm teasing. But that uh, couple of days there should be actually, you know, the, the tension in the backdrop may have sort of relaxed enough that, and I think it will, because by the 20th, Mars leaves the fixed sign group. Yay. Um, and we should spend a minute or two to um, talk about this Mars ingress into Gemini. Yeah, well, I think it's interesting that, you know, before it leaves, it's it's going to do it trying to Pluto. Yeah, yeah which that Saturn. was the, the fourth week when Saturn was opposing the sun. Yeah. So it's kind of finishing up on a 
more positive energy, yeah, like yeah. maybe ways to use that energy in a more positive way yeah. that does move us forward. And then as, so Mars in Gemini, Mars likes to be quick. Mars, you know, yeah. um, it can move, it can cut through stuff. Um, it, yeah, so you put it in Gemini and the whole thing speeds up with a touch of irritability if you try to stop the momentum. Yeah, and it may, may be a um, bigger scale, uh, you know, a whole lot of information that suddenly comes. Oh, God, like you need more information. But yeah, right. no, it could be just this floodgate opening. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, try yeah. and keep kind of trying to keep your post po focus positive because yeah. Yeah. we have to be aware of that. You don't know what. No, to, no, Neptune is still in Pisces. <laughs> the airwaves are not clear at all. I nope. will be so happy when Neptune leaves Pisces. Yay. Um, and so, but the other interesting thing about this ingress of Mars is it's going to be there. So people who have mutable signs, especially your Gemini, you know, charts, um, he's here until March. He will be stationing and, you know, tracking back that he stays in Gemini uh, for that whole time. And so, yeah, people it's going will... To stage, yeah, it's going to station at the end of October, which is when we have that around the time of the... Uh, Those eclipses? Clips. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah. So again, it's going to be part of that action. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, Mars likes to be where the action is. <laughs> so and it will be in the airways, right? Um, and so it's the rhetoric, it's the um, any forms of communication. I had to laugh. One of the announcements today that I saw on the news was, um, you know, so Elon Musk was going to buy Twitter and he reneged. And so Twitter is suing him. So now he's going to counter sue. And you're just like, wow, one should be a lawyer. And also probably lots it's, of it's insane. But a lot of it, I think, is also distraction for us. Well, whatever. I mean, it's. So, so for me, I think, you're, you know, keeping yourself focused on what's important to you. Yes. That is true. That and is true. and also be you know during that Mars retrograde we're going to have Mercury retrograde in September. Yes, we are. We are approaching. So this would be, is this the third one this year or the second? Hmm. It's so, going to it's going to retrograde back into Virgo. Yes. But is there another retrograde by the end of the year? I don't think. Mercury. Um. This the third one for the year. It's yeah. It retrogrades right at the end of December. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, but, yeah basically. And so, you know, the, the lead up to this, um, you know, with the precision right now that, you know, by this point in the month that Mercury is offering, you know, when it hits that retrograde though, it's going to be, okay, we actually need to reassess all this download. And of course, by now, by then, so Mars goes in on the 20th into Gemini. And so it will be working with that Mercury that's retrograde. Um, oh, that, you know, I bet the start of school is just going to be like a gone show. Well, yeah, they're both, well, Mercury will be in Libra and, you know, basically trining Mars in Gemini. Yeah. Yeah. Which better than a square. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Yeah, gotta have, that is true. You gotta have the back in aspect to each other. I'd rather have the trine than the square. That is true. That is true. Um, and so Mercury, you know, because it's ticking right along prior to its station in September, it will oppose Neptune on the 21st. Right? So is the 21st a Saturday? Uh, 21st is a Sunday. Is a Sunday, so it's the day after the wedding. Yay! <laughs> so it's not going to be part of the wet first wedding that I'm going to. It's not going to be part of that chart. Yay! <laughs> um, that's the day yeah. that that Mars goes into Gemini. Yeah. 
Uh, well, it, it's for so the dates that I have are set for PST time, right? But I, yeah. I don't give the hour that it that it happens. Yeah. So they're yeah. very close together. Mars it's it's Mercury, just moved in, uh, and yeah, yeah, and um, Mercury yeah. opposing Neptune. Yeah. Yeah, I think the other thing to notice too is when the inner planets go over that 18 degrees of the fixed. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which Venus will be doing uh, in August. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, on the one. 22nd, um, Mercury will have advanced far enough that it will now be opposing, no, signing to it. Yes. So there is an excellent opportunity to sign an agreement to, um, you know, do research forward. Yeah. Do do research. And to do research exactly. Yeah. yeah. If you've got something you want to know more about, that's the time to really dig yeah. deep. Yeah. I'll find out stuff you didn't know was buried there. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And so that comes with the sun's ingress into the Virgo. And so the whole play mode shifts. Yeah, as it always okay. does the end of summer. As it always does. <laughs> and all of a sudden, oh, right. Back to, work, got, back to school. Back to school, all of that nonsense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, okay. So on August the 24th, Uranus itself stations and turns direct. So, it's been on this 18 degrees and it will continue to be on this 18 degrees for a while. Yeah, because it stations at 18. Yeah, yeah. On the 25th, uh, Mercury, it ingresses into Libra and this will be, so does it actually during its retrograde back up to Virgo or not? Does it hit yes. Virgo again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it okay. backs up to, uh, it backs up to 24. Oh, wow. So for, it will actually be. So it will be on that degree that it is when it's, you know, aspecting Venus this time. And it'll be trining. Opposite uh, Neptune. Yeah. It'll, do, it'll do the trine to Pluto again. So again, yeah. you know, more opportunities to really dig deep, learn more. Yeah. At a yeah. deep one. And then to not be confused because it will also be opposite Neptune. <laughs> Well, I think that and then get lost in the sewer. And I think the trying to Pluto kind of can help that. I think the opposite. Oh yeah, yeah, one you, can help. Yeah. What you learn might inspire you in some way. That is true. There is an upside. Neptune, to Neptune can be confusing, but it can also be very inspiring and yeah. and open you up to new possibilities that you haven't considered before. And yep, yeah. <laughs> No, no, we have to find some positive things. Well, you know, I, it's important. I mean, yes, it, it's uh, to me, Neptune of the other planets is probably the most difficult because it is intangible. Yes, exactly. exactly. It's a very tangible world. Yeah. So I think that makes it a difficult energy for us to master or wrap our heads around because there's nothing to wrap it around. <laughs> Um, exactly. Exactly. But at the same time, that's where our imagination, our creativity, our, you know, our ability to see, you know, yeah. beyond. And, and it's also the group mind on some yeah. level. Yeah. Yeah. Where you tune in. And, um, you know, I, I looked at some charts here just a little while back. Um, pair of twins who have uh, Mercury in Pisces. And... Um, you know, just trying to assure the grandparents that, you know, it is, it is not our traditional way of thinking about how the mind works, but that doesn't make it wrong. It makes no. it. No, amazing. and it's more about feeling. Yeah. It's more yeah. about perceiving yeah. things through how it feels to you because yeah. it's a water sign. And yeah. also I think, yeah, I think that um, that opposition of Mercury to, to, Neptune can keep us from getting too locked into mm -hmm. that logical detail, you know, yeah. uh, kind of thing. And yeah, so you get that moment where all of the facts are laid out, but the individual pieces don't necessarily speak to the whole. But when you add Neptune, it can. So this is almost like that. Um, uh, 
Oh, not in the analogy, oh. but the little story about all the men who are blind and are feeling uh, an elephant, right? Oh, you know, so you add Neptune and that can give you that gestalt where you pull all the pieces together and something comes out of it. It's also connection to spirit, you know, yeah. the yeah. essence of who we are rather than the physical, you know, bits yeah, and pieces. And, and that's an important thing that's kind of out of balance right now. Yes. And I think that Mercury opposite to Neptune might help to, especially with the trying to Pluto, yeah. get a little more balance around that. You know, yes, we need information, but we also don't want to lose track of that essential self, that spirit that is within us, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Anyway, yeah. Okay, so August 25th, Mercury goes into Libra. Uh, and then the 26th is uh, Venus is now squaring Uranus and the sun is squaring Mars. But this is, these are from, yeah, so the Mars sun square is in mutable signs and obviously the Venus squaring Uranus is in the fixed sign. So, and that's just before the new moon. So I am going to pull up the new moon so that because that will give us the visual yeah. of where we're at. Yeah, so there's Mars off by himself in a mutable sign. Well, um, but but this, that new moon is like exactly squaring. It is. I've just seen that. Yeah, yes. Right. Ah, it's so from, from the start of the month, which is like a fixed square, um, to that outlet, which is a mutable square. Ah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's um, yeah, that, this is actually kind of an unusual chart. Yeah, and because Venus has taken up that fourth leg of the the exactly, exactly. He is trining um, Chiron, which is yep. good. And well, yeah, yeah, trining Chiron. I think Jupiter. What, what's Jupiter doing? Well, I guess Jupiter is. I'm not sure it's doing anything to anybody other than there's a loose opposition to Mercury. Well, yeah, Mercury opposite it, which is not a bad thing. No, no, not kind of tight, but it is possible. Yeah. Yeah. Giving a little expanded awareness, perhaps. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I mean, this is just so classic. Um, the new moon, the first new moon before school starts. So yeah. Everybody is in that, you know, getting their ducks all in a row to start a new year. It's almost in some ways, it's interesting because we say the new year on January the 1st, but in some ways, just with the rhythm of Western society anyway, yeah. Uh, this is kind of the start of the new year, you know. Yeah. Everybody yeah. goes back to routine and school starts and blah blah blah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think well, we have those arbitrary things that we decided. <laughs> exactly. And so there's gonna be a lot of motivation to, you know, because Mars is supporting that new moon of starting things. Um, Mercury is training Mars. That's true. That's true. Yes. Yeah. You've got so, the square this, this the new moon, yeah. but you've also got that trying from Mercury, which is yeah. So bad. there there can be, I mean, obviously Mars squaring it, there can be some classes, but um, you know, Mercury will help to point out, you know, both sides. Well, especially uh, Mercury and Libra, right? Yeah, well, exactly. It, 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 let's find the middle ground here. Yeah. Yep. So let's oh, look okay. at both sides. Let's not yep. get, you know, that yep. kind of thing. Yeah, let's not get too carried away. And then lurking in and, the background. And Mars, and Mars is sextile in Jupiter. Yeah. So yeah. again, you know, let's get, let's look at the bigger picture. Let's not get caught up, you know. Exactly. In those, exactly. In those new moon details. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's, that pressure cooker thing at the beginning of the month. Now it's not gone, definitely, um, but it isn't our central focus at the end of the month. Yeah. Yeah, which is nice. Um, Venus isn't, she's not at home in, in Leo at all. So no. no. And she's, she's very close to that opposition with Saturn. So that's yeah. 
not a happy place either. So it's yeah. yeah. It's it's again there's tension for sure and there isn't a, there isn't an outlet an easy outlet for the square yeah, this. That. Yeah, no. So no. yeah, I think that can feel hmm, pretty Yeah, easy. so it's readjusting to, you know, the roles that make the start of, you know, the classic new year. Yeah, it's like yeah. putting all that out. Who does what and yada yada yada. But she's well, also just, some of us, she's also, we're going to be at a wedding that day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just I, trying to think that, okay, so one o'clock, this could be the wedding chart of my grandson. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, and Venus is just finished coming off that 18 degrees, right? That, yeah. yeah. You know, she's, she's, again, it's that 18, 18, 18. It's 19 this time for her, but just yeah. barely. And That's so... Perfect. It's really, really, in, it's like, don't forget <laughs> that 18 so the, the longevity of his marriage, um, I mean, the bonus of a fixed sign thing is, and with Saturn being part of, uh, let's say, a marriage chart, is it does have cement. Whether it's good cement or not, eh, that's, that's open to discussion, but it does give it cement. Um, yeah, so, and Jupiter is close to midheaven in this. Huh? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, it's still, Jupiter is... It's in a sextile, it's Mars, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, it might work. <laughs> you know, they're, this is, they're both, I believe, 30, so, you know, they're both also doing their Saturn return, so. That's always an interesting moment to get married. Yeah. yeah. Okay, darn. We still have 10 minutes. Oh, well, you know, there's, there's. I know, I know. There's a lot to look at for this month because there's a. There is. So, um, uh, okay. On a grander scale, uh -huh. then. Um, you know, this kind of fixed tension um, is possibly, and, and we talked a little bit about this before the show started, um, is the undermining of the established order of things. Um, you know, if there isn't enough pressure on something that has been so stable for so long, um, you know, there's no way you're going to make it collapse, but it is this type of pressure that we're seeing here in the beginning of August and that, you know, the, the next two of it, so it's not done, but we could see some significant cracks in the foundation. Well, I, th I think so. As I say, it's yeah. all leading up to the, the final square between Saturn and Uranus, and that is yeah. the changing of the guard. That's the, you know, but... <laughs> It is the breaking down of that old yeah, yeah. corporatocracy with Pluto right at the end of Capricorn and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, and I think the interesting that the the first Grand Cross had Mercury. You know, it's like people getting some perspective on that Saturnian, you know, world world order kind of thing. That yeah, yeah. You know what? maybe we should question this a bit. Maybe we should look at it a little more closely because. Yeah. It may not be serving us all that well. And I think also that, you know, we have that Mars North node uh, Uranus and really we're seeing so much going on in the world right now with farmers, you know, you know, they're trying to take their land away and it's like, we got nothing left to lose now. This is a truly grassroots movement that's happening. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that is, Huge. Yeah, food, food insecurity is top of mind yeah, for a lot know, of people right now. On a grand scale, there's a lot more of us than there is of those so Always self, self Always self-styled elites who want to control everything. You know, so their their grasp, their grip on things may be getting more tenuous, which yeah. is you know, they've had it far too long and yep. They're and running we need crazy. a new model. Yeah, and that starts from the ground up because the foundation that it's standing on now is not sustainable. So we need right from the very bottom up. 
Yeah. And you know, and when when we've got the middle degree of the fixed signs, like the north node is nearly on it in this chart, sure. last chart. Right. Um, that's that's the midpoint. You know, again, it's activating the zero Aries axis. Right. Yeah. Right. Because it's By the forty-five degree yeah. angle. So yeah. that's that's an important piece as well because you've got mercury here yep. just past that world axis point yep. Yep. at zero yep. past the zero degrees of labor point yep. which is going to go forward go back you know go yeah. Yeah. three times so you know this is it's there's a message in that you know that yep. we need to you know not just individually but come together more collectively, which is, you know, Uranus and Taurus is very, and especially conjunct the North Node, we need to come together and work together. And, yeah, yeah, on the North Node, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, that I think is really significant. And the fact that that's getting hammered so hard with the first Mercury, then the, the Moon, Sun, Moon, and then, and yeah, then, and then, then Venus, now Venus. Uh, yeah. And yeah. then finally, in, in the beginning of October, we get uh, the final square for. Yeah. And um, it, it stays there. It stays within less than a degree of that square for, I think, two a whole weeks. month. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Until we start getting the 18, um, Uranus will back up to 17. Well, and then Saturn stations at 18. So, yeah, so we're doing a degree. Bam, on that 18 degrees. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, you know, I think it's yes, really. We can, we, okay, so as we're joking, you know, so for the, you know, the people who have, you know, three degrees around 18 degrees of fixed signs, I slowly put up my hand and say, uh, well, mine's <laughs> close enough to that too. Yeah. You know, it's, um, it's not over until the fat lady says. No, no, absolutely. This is an so, ongoing yeah. thing. But you know that, as we were saying, that that self-proclaimed elite group have been doing this for a very, 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 very long time. Yes, yeah, and it's kind of like we're just waking that. waking up. Uranus is waking us up to the fact. Oh, how come they're doing that to us? What gives them the right? <laughs> Maybe we should do something about that. And there's a lot of us. Maybe we can. You yeah, know, I think that's yeah. what's happening. You know, people are just, they, you know, they, it's a great awakening that's going on, which is kind of exciting, but it's going to be turbulent, of course, because yeah. Yeah. that Saturn's not going to let go easily. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely not. Yeah, that yeah. is true. Yeah. But yeah, so no. my dear, we're, we have, just so that folks know on the radio, we have one show, I think we have two shows in the chat. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And so whether you get us live and in person next week, probably, maybe, I don't know, hard to say. Anyway, um, we will come up with something. Probably. We will come up with something. Yes, we will. If not, you might hear the episode in which I walk through those three um, Time Lord things put together. That's one of the shows that hasn't aired yet. Um, what's the other one? The one that you did on writers. Yes, yeah. that one is quite oh, exciting. Yes. The other thing I was thinking was, like when I was, when I was taking uh, psychology courses in university, because I'd been into astrology already, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I was looking at these different schools of thought in psychology. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And okay. You know, I think I even said to one of my profs, you know, well, you know, astrology was around long before psychology. Of course, they laughed at me. Yeah, but basically, you can see the where the theory emerges from in the know, okay. That would be an interesting show. So I, oh, I that like that. Might be an interesting one to do. You know, you yeah. got you're on. You're on. All these different schools of, of you know, beliefs about what, how the mind yeah. works, and you know, in yeah. my mind, in my mind, they've probably each got a little corner of it, right? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it comes out of who they are and their experience and what you know. Well, and and true, it would also come out of the 
the big outer planet dynamics that it refers into, right? Or out of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I thought that here. might be an interesting thing to I think it is. I think you might be just telling us what we're going to talk about next week. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we do this so well. <laughs> Okay, folks, I, I think we can call this show a wrap. So um, remember to breathe, especially in the first seven days or so of August. Um, and that the tension is everywhere. And, you know, it'd be pretty hard to miss it. Um, and yeah, so try not to keep focused on the positive, right? You know, I mean, yeah. keep breathing in, looking at nature, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Go to what gives you pleasure and and support, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and and you know. It is summer. Have fun. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. Enjoy yeah. life. <laughs> okay, so for those of you that are on the radio, uh, you have been listening to CJMP, the Fat Regions Community Radio Station. And uh, thank you for listening, and we will uh, see you next week. Bye. Thank you. I've got two minutes before I can bring you back on. Okay. Okay, I think we're back, you and I. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think that went really well.